So you get your fancy dancy gimbal, but what is the best way to utilize it? You can't just be over here swinging it all over the place. Today we're going to go over seven tips on how to get great gimbal shots as well as a few things about this particular gimbal here right here, the Moza Air 2. Let's get into it. So you're committed to getting some smooth, crispy, buttery, creamy, whatever adjective you want to use here, type footage, but you get your gimbal because that's a big part of it, or at least that's what everybody on the YouTubes here say, but you have to use it in a particular type of way here. Let's go over some of these tips here. And again, using the Moza Air. Disclaimer before we get started though, as I'm using the Moza Air, Moza did send this gimbal over for me to check out. But as usual, all the thoughts here are completely my own and they have no input into this video and they're seeing it for the very first time, just like you guys are. All right, so first things first, before we even start talking about tips to use the gimbal, the first most important tip is balance. You need to balance your gimbal correctly not just close to being right but you need to have almost perfect balance to where if you put the gimbal in any position before you turn it on the gimbal will stay in that position that will not only take stress off of the motors but then the gimbal won't have to be thinking as much on how to balance and you won't get any of those micro jitters that you might see there in your footage all right, next and most importantly is the way that you walk with the gimbal. Stop trying to be cool. You're going to look kind of stupid, but if you just walk regularly, at least like I forget to do sometimes, you are going to get bouncy bobby footage because we're not stabilized on this axis right here. So instead of walking regular like I'm showing here, you want to get down and do the ninja slash duck walk, get some bend in your knees and walk heel to toe as it is and you're going to get smoother footage compared to what I got before. Next tip here is going to be your use of foreground. Now foreground is important in any type of photography because when you're looking at something on a screen you're looking at just here but you want to show as much depth in your shot as possible but the reason this is so important with gimbals is that it really helps to accentuate the movement. So if you look at this shot here as I'm just panning across at this building, you can't really see too much what's going on, especially since I'm at that focal length. But if I saw the second shot, just to have this lower edge of something, you could tell the movement is a lot more accentuated because we have something in the shot to help show that it is moving there rather than just your subject. You want something in the foreground to help accentuate the movements there. All right, next up is nail in focus. There's a few different ways to do this on the Moza Air or with any gimbal to be honest with you. First things first is sometimes you might want to use manual focus and just set a focus point and then come out of focus and then walk in. It kind of gives a cool look because then you have the movement and then you have things coming into focus as well and stop. If you're having a hard time not remembering where to stop, you can either map out your steps or if there's nothing else moving in your shot, what you can do is start at the focus point and then walk out of focus and then reverse the clips in post and you will have near perfect focus there. The other two things on the Moza Air, it does connect to certain cameras. So you can connect to your Sony cameras and help to um, control focus there. Or you can purchase a follow focus module, which connects to the entire thing. And then you use the scroll wheel to control the focus there and it connects to the monitor. You, you hook it all up there. The other thing you're gonna to want to do is you might wanna use custom settings for different scenarios. I will link this video for, down below from a kitty from a Tola Vision. She has a cool video on settings, but as you could see here, the Moza Air 2 was also one of the first gimbals to have a screen on the gimbal itself. So you don't have to go into the app to change the settings. As you can see here, I can quickly just use the scroll wheel to change my tilt, roll, and pan here real quick. I do find that really helpful when it is that I want to get slower moving shots, I just slow it down real quick. And then you can also configure it to where it could be different things with different scenarios depending on what you're shooting. Next up, again with accentuating movement, you're gonna to want to shoot through things. So like I'm shooting this lake right here, I just found a little frame in this bridge and just pushed in 
through the bridge. The reason why this is so important, because again, it helps to frame something up and accentuate the movement as you're going in and out of the movement. So you can look for windows, frames like this, columns, even this big opening at what looks like this London gate here can be pretty cool here as well to use. All right, next you want to use different focal lens, diversify your focal lens. This is why I do like using zoom lenses a lot on my gimbals. So I do tend to um, use bigger gimbals like the Moza Air 2 here because it can hold my Sigma 24 to 70 with the a7 III or a7S III on it. And you could set it up to where you could zoom in and out. But in a situation like that, what I would do is use 24 millimeters as my wide angle to do push-in shots. Wide angles are great for that to do your push-in shots because you get a lot into the frame there and you could see a lot of different movements on the side. And then I use tighter angles to do pans and orbits because it kind of gives you that parallax effects there that Joshua was always searching for in his Anamorphia videos there. So as you can see, when I move from side to side, that's when I use tight focal lens. So always try and switch up the different focal lens and do different movements with different focal lens there to see how they look. Last but definitely not least there, try and get low down to the ground, especially with a wide angle because it feels like everything is moving a lot faster and the entire ground and everything is rushing away from you there. So as you could see here in this particular shot, even though I did it in 60 frames per second, it still feels like stuff is moving really, really fast there with the movement because it's so long to, low to the ground and I had it at 24 millimeters there. So you're getting that full wide look there with the low angle. And with the Moza Air Cross, you could put it in inverse mode, flip this up here and then you're like this and you're in inverted mode. And then you could just do the shots like I was doing there. And then when you're ready, you just flip it back over and you're good to go there. Anyway, that was just a quick video on how to get some great shots with your gimbal. This would work with any gimbal. However, my thoughts on the Moza Air 2. So they did send this over to me a little bit before the 2S came out. However, I still think that the Air 2 is a flagship product for them. And if you're on a budget, it might not be the quote unquote best gimbal out there, but if you're on a budget, it will save you a couple hundred dollars to put towards something else. And it's still a very, very, very capable gimbal. And even though I haven't got my hands on the S version, it has fixed all the little qualms that I had about this, particularly the locking mechanisms and then also the battery. I don't like the separate batteries because it's an extra thing that I do have to travel with there. So they fixed that on the 2S. So links will be down below if you want to check any of those things out. Hit the subscribe button, hit the notification button because there's a lot more to come and I will catch you in the next video. Big up yourself. Peace.